Today I want to cover how to encrypt a USB drive so it can be opened on any computer without having any additional software installed. If you want to learn more about this topic, then please watch the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please show your support by subscribing and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any future content. So back in January, I did a video on using VeraCrypt to encrypt um, either a drive or a volume. Since then, I've received some questions about how to encrypt a USB drive so that it can be carried around with you and opened on any computer, regardless of whether or not the software's been installed on it. So today's video, I want to walk you through how to do that and take advantage of a really powerful tool. So let's walk through the process of setting up and creating a USB so that I can carry data with me without having to worry about whether or not the computer I'm going to be opening it on has uh, VeraCrypt installed. So for starters, you have to already have VeraCrypt in some fashion, meaning you have to either have it installed on the computer or download the portable mode. If you look at their website, they have two versions of VeraCrypt to download. One is the installer, which will put it on your computer, which is the way I recommend you doing it, basically installing it on your computer so that you don't have to worry about having different versions at different places. And the other option is the portable version. Now, the portable version is basically the same as the installation version, other than it doesn't actually install. It actually just extracts the files and allows you to extract it to a directory so they can be run from that directory. For the purposes of this example or this video, we're going to actually use the installation version. And although the steps are exactly the same, if you use the portable version, you're just running it from a, you know, a local directory. That's really kind of handy is if you're going to put it on a larger USB drive and, or have it, you know, as part of your software collection, you can just execute anytime you want on any computer. So let's assume for a moment that you have the installed version and let's walk through the process to see how it actually is done. Um, I'm not going to go through the actual installation since that's already referred to on my other video. So we're just going to pick up from the, the part where it's already installed and let's see how to actually create the USB stick. So we're going to go ahead and launch VeraCrypt. And we're going to go up to the Tools menu and we're going to click Traveler Disk Setup. Now what this does is basically creates and prepares the USB drive and copies all the necessary files that it needs to actually run. So the very first thing it, ask, it asks us to do is to, is to point to the root folder. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to click on the E drive. So that is now, um, that is basically the assigned drive. Now this again assumes that your drive, your USB drive has already been formatted and, and ready to go. And make sure what I would suggest when you format is you use the XFAT, your partition. You can use others, but I've just found better results using XFAT. So once I've pointed to the, to the uh, root folder, it has a couple options here. Um, I can include the VeraCrypt creation wizard. I can include the volume expander. I'm going to leave those at default. And then I can include an auto run configuration. Now the auto run configuration will work, um, but it only works a part of the time. That's one of the downsides is because depending on your Windows security settings and how you have it configured, it may or may not auto start. But for purposes of this exercise, we're going to assume it's going to actually auto start. So we're going to click on auto start and then we're going to hit create. And it says the disk's been created. And quickly, I'm going to look over and I'm going to look at the E drive and I'm going to see that it's created an auto run INF file and it's copied in a, in a folder called VeraCrypt all the folders I'm get, or all the uh, files I'm going to need. So uh, we'll get back to this in a minute. Let's go ahead and, and finish it off. So the next step is to actually create my volume. So I'm going to do that. Now I can do this a couple different ways. Um, I can do, since I've already got VeraCrypt installed, I can just go ahead and create, um, create a volume and walk through the wizard this way. Or if I'm doing this and I want to create a separate volume and I don't have the software installed, I can actually go to the drive, go to the VeraCrypt folder and double click on VeraCrypt 
and it will launch the same application. Again, this is in portable mode. The way I'm going to describe it here is I'm going to actually create the encrypted file container onto the USB drive. So I'm going to leave this at default, click next. I'm going to leave it as a standard volume, although you can pick the hidden if you prefer. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the file that I'm creating. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this uh, in a folder called data. And I'm going to say, now you don't have to put it in a folder. You can leave it in the root. It's really up to you. I just like the file organization aspect of this. So I just do it this way, but it's totally up to you. So I'm going to click save and you can see the, the path here. I will never want to save history. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to leave all this at default. I'm going to hit next. And here's where I want to select the size. Now I've got a 32 gig flash drive in there. Um, but we have to reserve some of the space for the, the file, so we can't do the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is, just for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just going to make this a um, a 5 gig file, just so it doesn't take all day to create. When you're creating an encrypted volume on a, net, on a USB, it's very dependent on the speed of the USB, and it can take an extremely long time. Uh, in this particular test, test system that I'm running right now, I've only got USB 2.0, so it's going to take even longer. So I'm going to leave this pretty small. Obviously, I could make this a lot larger um, if I wanted to, if I had the space. If I'm carrying around a 128 gig USB stick or drive, then obviously I can, I'm going to make this a lot bigger. But just be aware, it takes a while. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and I'm going to put in a password telling me I'm just using a test password so yeah I understand it's too short and I do want large file support so I'm going to click next so here they want you to actually roll your mouse around and just kind of basically come up with random characters so I'm going to do that until the line turns green and that's good enough right now I'm going to click on format and here it's going to format now I'm going to go ahead and jump to the end here because uh, otherwise you'll have to sit through you know five or ten minutes of blistering speed of USB 2.0. Okay, and at the end, it's going to probably prompt you for, because uh, it needs administrator rights, one last prompt before it actually completes the volume. And there it is. I wanted to remind you that between the time you start the format and the time it completes can be significantly long. And as a matter of fact, it looks like it gets to the end and then just pauses for quite some time. Don't abort it. Just let it wait. It's a very slow process. Once it's created, though, you're good to go. So now the volume's been created. I'm going to go ahead and click Exit. So if we take a quick look at the E drive, we now see what we saw before. And we now see the encrypted volume that I just created called Protected Files, roughly 5 gigs. If I take this to a computer that does not have VeraCrypt installed, I need to launch included version. So again, if we look at the files, VeraCrypt is included. There's a VeraCrypt.exe file. And if I click this on any computer, it's not going to install. It's just simply going to run and allow me to open that USB encrypted volume. Now, what I typically do to make things a little easier, and it's not necessary, it just depends on, you know, how simple you want to make it, is I actually create a shortcut to here. So I'm going to create shortcut and I'm going to actually cut this and I'm going to move it to the root. So that way, if my computer does not auto run, which many Windows 10 systems won't, double click on the shortcut and go right into the section that allows me to attach. So now that I'm here, I'm going to actually select file. I'm going to go to the E drive. And I'm going to go to my data folder, click on the protected files volume that I just created, click open, and I'm going to attach it to the T drive just for the fun of it. And I'm going to go ahead and say mount. Of course, it asks me for passwords. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to click OK. It takes a few seconds to attach. And there it is. It's attached to the T drive. So now if I look at my Explorer, I can now see that I've got the E drive, which is the unencrypted USB drive, which contains my encrypted folder. And my encrypted folder is here. So now whatever files I copy to that will be encrypted into that volume and I can bring it with me. And of course, I all need to dismount this. So when I'm actually in VeraCrypt, I will have to dismount my T volume so that I can actually eject 
the USB drive. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and dismount. It's dismounted. Now if I want to actually eject this, I'll be able to. There it is. So that's basically the only process that you need. Um, it's just an extra step. The rest of it works almost exactly to the standard Veracrypt program. The only thing is, is you're basically creating a portable version onto a USB drive. And that's about it for this video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. It does help support the channel. Click that notifications icon. You'll be notified of any future content. And of course, if you like this video, throw it a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.